Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the second video with Sanjana. For those of you who do not know her yet, uh, she is from the batch of 2018 to 2022 uh, from ECM branch at VIT Chennai. And she has been recently placed at Microsoft. So in this video, we would like to know about know from Sanjana about how you can plan out your three and four years of college. Basically three years because that is after when uh, you start setting for placements and other exams. So we will know how the roadmap can be. So let's begin with this video. So hi, Sanjana. Welcome back again. Hello. So Sanjana, uh, a very basic question. How were you as a student? Because students, when they are going to join the college, they also start comparing themselves that, OK, this he or this DB has got a placement into Microsoft. Let's see how we compare to them. Where do we stand? So how were you as a student in school or in college? How would you uh, picture yourself? if you look at in retrospect? Um, I would say I have always been uh, like one of the toppers in class and like a very sincere, dedicated student. And I always believe that I have to give my 100% as to whatever I am doing. So I would say I was a dedicated, sincere uh, student always. All right, all right. Very good. So... The next question is, since most of the students are going to make a career into the IT industry, because that is how the industry is, those companies come the maximum to the college, and the skill that is required there, the primary skill is coding. So when was the first time you were introduced to coding? Uh, I think I was introduced to coding first in class nine uh, when I had taken up computer applications for ICSE. I was in ICSE board, so I had taken up computer and uh, that's when I had done coding in Java. So that was my first uh, time into coding. Uh, after that, uh, in 11th and 12th, I didn't uh, take up computer. I had PCMB. So right after that, the next uh, time I started coding was in college. Uh, so, yeah. All right. So how much of coding, I mean, let's say if I rate you, I I'm not going to rate you. Let's say on a scale of 10, how much coding did you know before joining the college? I would say some uh, three or four out of 10. Okay. And how much do you know now? <laughs> I would say eight, eight out of okay. 10. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, let's say a student is joining now and he does not have the basics of coding because many students, they do not. Uh, have coding in schools and everything. So how much do you think it is possible or practical for them to learn from now on? Yeah, it's definitely possible to learn coding with a lot of uh, regular practice. I think uh, within a year or something, you can definitely catch up on all the basics and you can move into the higher advanced uh, coding. And which language should uh, the beginners st start from? I would say um, knowing the three programming languages, that is Java, C++, and Python, the most common ones, I would say starting off with Python is a more... Uh, you know, it's beginner friendly and it's easy to remember. It's, it helps you focus on the concepts and the problem solving aspect rather than on the syntax and everything. So starting off with Python is, I think, a good choice. And slowly you can move into C++ and Java as per your choice. Okay. And let's say somebody has uh, done coding in only one language because many people do not find time to explore other languages as well. Uh, during their profession time and then there are companies which maybe require a particular language uh, for you to know so is it easy to i mean make a switch at the last if you if you know one language at least very well then is it easy to make a switch or how how does it turn out to be uh, this actually most uh, companies while most companies actually allow you to have a freedom of the coding language okay. but again some do prefer uh, like only c++ or java as these are the most you know the uh, common ones which have been used since a lot of years so that way but uh, switching from python to c++ i would say would take some time because the syntax is quite different while on the other hand if you if you, if you have to switch from c++ or uh, 
to java or to python i think it would be easy because uh, the syntax is quite similar in c++ and java just here and there and c as well if you would say, uh, say. but then uh, python is again syntax is quite easy so it will be easier to shift that way but then from python to c++ it might take some time but again uh, in a month or two if you uh, do some regular practice it wouldn't be that all right so now let's imagine somebody is going to join college now or has just joined the college now in september so how should he plan out his first year and second year and then third year like like should he begin coding now itself or should he explore some other things as well so how should he plan out his first year basically okay uh, so in terms of uh, coding so if you are in a branch relating to computer science or ecm or for that matter and you are interested coding is actually essential for all the branches it's uh, something it, that is taught to all the branches so it's very uh, important that you start off right from the first semester with some regular practice so that first you understand the concepts the problem solving and stuff and if you are really uh, interested you should definitely build up on the uh, concepts with regular practice this uh leaving gaps in between would actually make it more difficult you will have to go back again so i would say a little bit of daily practice is required throughout uh, your college life okay okay that makes sense so is there any particular source where students can refer to or i mean did you refer to any particular channel or materials outside the curriculum of vit yeah definitely like i when i followed uh, the coding practice questions and all other material from geeks for geeks so you could go uh, through that and other than that i did also hacker rank i did those questions and so all of uh, those uh, programming practice sites you could go through them and for some material relating to theory or something like the concepts you could go through geeks for geeks so yeah these would be really helpful okay okay all right and how much is the importance of cgpa right from the first semester how much cgpa should one ideally maintain or try to maintain Uh, cgp is actually a essential criteria for being eligible as well as uh, you know being shortlisted not only in the like placements right from your internship opportunities that come it's really important and other than that even in college uh, from cgp the ffcs slots that you get you you will get better chances and then even if you if you're hostel or it helps you in the uh, room a uh, selection and all that criteria as well so i think cgp is really important in terms of attendance as well so you don't have the attendance criteria if you have something above 9 so i would say uh, keeping a cgp above 9 is uh, is decent and good enough and uh, i would say scoring a high cgp in the first semester or the year itself is really important because uh, as you move into the first, subsequent years it becomes little uh, more and more difficult to score that time so if you have a high cgp right from the first year it helps you balance it out and overall maintain something over nine okay all right so does it not become very hectic maintaining a good cgpa then also referring to other sources for coding and everything how was it for you uh definitely like when you are starting off with the, all the pressure of like curriculum the projects and all other activities you do in college definitely there is a little uh, tough time to plan it out but uh, like i said you don't need to put in too much time every day just maybe a half an hour one or two questions each of maybe if you're doing coding and then you're doing your projects and all other stuff i think it gets balanced out that way okay all right and apart from uh, the i mean academics what are you a part of clubs or sports and how important are they in your college life i would say every experience counts right like particularly when it's in terms of something which would help you build your team work or leadership or any uh, kind of that so i was a part of uh, some uh, club so i was a part of enactus and then i was also a part of associated with we teach and uh, since i am a classical dancer i was i took part in events of dance club and uh, small events or teams relating to techno vit and vibrance a fest that we have so i would say it's really important to balance the co curricular as well as the extra curricular activities 
um, and it actually helps you develop other skills which are you know tested in some way or the other in different life scenarios so taking this question somewhat forward and so that we can know it in more specific so based on your uh, interview or exam experience in the company or also from what you know from your friends so what are some technical and soft skills that you can highlight are required to i mean make a career in a company in a top company okay uh, so starting with technical i would say definitely build on your coding skills and dsa so data structures and algorithms is really important along with the basics uh, basic oops concepts so uh, these are really important these are tested in more or less all of the interviews in the technical rounds as well as the online the first test that you have preliminary test that i would say and in terms of soft skills uh, there are interview rounds where they uh, try to assess your leadership your teamwork your personality i would say and your aptitude aptitude is again like a uh, important life skill right and it's tested right. in lot of interviews as well uh, so that way uh, focus on your leadership your personality and aptitude so sanjana another question let's say somebody is not really interested into placements but somebody wants to go for let's say mba ms or mtech will they get enough time to prepare for those examinations or is it possible to spare time out of even if somebody is studying for placements is it possible to take time out of that or is it very very hectic and you cannot at all manage it how would you uh, surprise it i think uh, it is possible like uh, after our third year uh, we are not really left with a lot of subjects right from the end of third year i would say we are not really left with a lot of subjects so and that time it's when the placements actually start that is from our seventh semester so uh, if you are not sitting for placement at all then i would say you would have a lot of time to enough balance between the one or two subjects that you have left for in college if at all and then the rest of the time for the higher study so you would practically have a lot of the seventh and eighth semester for pre- preparing for the exams and even if you are sitting for the placements similarly uh, yeah we do have a lot of tests and everything coming up every day but again for the placements all the test is your the coding and the aptitude that all the theory concepts you have learned right from first year because you planned it out and you were going through everything on a daily basis right. so i think that way also you can take out time uh, easily if you want to do something else as well right uh one more question that the students are very confused about uh, because they are just starting out college and many of them do not really have laptops already so which laptop did you use and what laptop do you think is sufficient for somebody who uh, wants to i mean do coding and stuff everything in the college so what requirements do you think in a laptop should students look out for laptop i would say nothing really specific i had an i5 intel i5 uh, hp laptop uh, with a 8 gb ram so i think that was more or less enough for me uh, throughout college i had no issues so i would say uh, just uh, go re- like look out for a, a decent enough ram and a processor and i think that would be fine okay all right uh, i think we have covered many of the many almost all the points that a new joiner would uh, probably be wondering about any other tips or suggestions that you would like to give them i would uh, like to tell that yeah right uh, while i mentioned that you'll have to plan you have to look a little ahead think about it but i would say you have to enjoy as well you have to explore and uh, stay dedicated so balance it out between the curricular as well as the co-curricular activities and uh, consistency and hard work is the key. so yeah okay thank you so much for joining me sanjana do not forget to subscribe and join me on telegram thank you